To create a VB.NET application that will generate an EDI file, we first bring up Visual Studio.NET. Open a new project. Under Visual Basic, select Windows Application. Then on the name field, type in the application name, example, Gen835Net. Then click on OK. Once we've opened up a new project, we reference the Framework EDI component by going to the menu. Select Project, then Add Reference, then under the .NET tab, look for EDI Dev Framework EDI.NET. Select it, then hit OK. Once it's been selected, we can see EDI Dev Framework EDI.NET under References. Next, we add a button. Give it an appropriate name. And then double click on it to get to the source code. The first thing we do in our code is to add a line to use the EDI Dev Framework EDI namespace. We do this in VB by typing imports EDI Dev dot framework EDI. From here on, rather than typing all the codes under the button click from scratch, I'm going to bring up an EDI program which I've already created that does the same thing, which is to generate an EDI file. I'll just explain the source code as we go through each line. Before we can actually write any code, we need to open up your trading partner's implementation guideline so that we can follow their specifications when creating the EDI file such as what terminators we use, what segments are mandatory, and what values are assigned to the data elements. If you received a sample EDI file from your trading partner, it can be helpful as a reference, so open it with the eFile Manager. I'll also open up the same Ceph file that our program will use with the Ceph Manager utility so that we can reference the guideline if we need to. Back to our program. Under the button click procedure, we first declare the objects for the parts that make up the EDI file. The first object we declare is the OEDI doc object to represent the entire EDI file. Then the OInterchange object to represent the interchanges in the file. And since interchanges are sectioned into functional groups, we would also have to create objects for them, in this case as OGroup objects. Functional groups are further sectioned into transaction sets, which we represent as O transaction set. And finally, we have the O segment object as the variable for all segments comprising the entire EDI file. Once we've declared all these objects, we instantiate first the O EDI doc object, as shown here on this line. We then load the corresponding set file of the EDI file we will be generating by calling the load schema method of the OEDI doc object. So if you are creating an A35X091 EDI file, we should load the A35X091 Ceph file. So following the guideline, we start constructing the EDI file. 
First, we define the terminators that are to be used. And here, the segment terminator is the tilde, followed by a carriage return line feed. For the element terminator, we have assigned an asterisk. And for the composite terminator, a greater than sign. So the first segment we create is the ISA segment, or the interchange control header. We do this by calling the create interchange method of the OEDI doc object. We then instantiate an O segment object by calling the get data segment header of the O interchange object. And then populate its data elements with values as specified by your trading partner's guideline. This populates the first data element with 00. zero. The second data element is populated with blanks. The third data element is assigned a value 00, zero and so on. You do this for all data elements in the ISA segment. which has 16 data elements. In the eFile Manager, these elements are shown here. There are 16 data elements in the ISA segment. To create the GS segment, we do the same thing, but we call the create group method of the O interchange object. We get the segment, then populate its data elements. The first data element is assigned the value HP. The second data element with sender department. The third with receiver department. And so on. We do the same thing for the next control segment, which is the ST segment. We call the create transaction set of the O group object to create it then assign values to its data elements. To create all the other segments in the transaction set, we call the create data segment method of the O transaction set object. And pass the hierarchical string syntax of the segment in its parameter. For example, to create the BPR segment, we pass the string BPR in the create data segment method. And we would populate its data elements the same way we did the other previous segments by assigning values to the data element value property. In this example, for the sake of simplicity, the values are hard coded in the program. But obviously, in your own final application that you create, the values assigned to these data elements would probably come from variables or database fields. If we reference the implementation guideline for the segment BPR, it tells us the valid codes in the first data elements and the monetary amount in data element 2 and in data element 3 they have valid codes as well. So in our program to follow the implementation guideline we put in valid code C the monetary amount of 150,000 
and the valid code C again in data element 3. To create segments in a loop, like the N1 segment in the N1 loop, we would pass the string N1 backslash N1. Where the first N1 is the loop tag, the second N1 is the segment ID. To create the N3 segment in loop N1, we would write N1 backslash N3 as the string parameter. The N1 is for the loop, the N3 is for the segment ID. We do the same thing for all other segments in the loop like the N4 and REF segments. Let's view the N1 loop in the eFile Manager. If we expand the loop, we can see the group of segments that it is comprised of. The N1 segment, N3 segment, N4 segment, and REF segment. To create segments in the second instance of the same loop, we just add a loop counter to the loop tag. So the syntax would be n1, then 2 in parentheses for the loop instance counter, backslash, then n1 for the segment. The syntax is pretty much the same when a segment is in several nested loops as in this example. This CLP segment is in loop CLP which is nested in loop LX. And this syntax is for creating the CAS segment in loop CLP which is nested in the LX loop. Let us view these segments in the eFile Manager. We expand the LX loop, then the CLP loop to see both the CLP and CAS segment. After you're done creating all the data segments and assigning values to their data elements, just call the save method of the OEDI doc object. At this point, the Freddy component will construct the EDI file into a file with the specifications we have entered in this program. If you want the OEDI doc object to return the EDI as a string, just call the get EDI string. In this example, the EDI string is displayed on screen. So let us run this program. We first compile it, then run it on debug mode. Under this generate button is where we did all our coding to generate an EDI file. When we click on it, an EDI file gets generated and is displayed on screen.